Hey there, and welcome to The Pseudo Show, brought to you by Tux Digital. I decided to record some commentary on the current state of open source sustainability and what we can do as a community to do better. All that and more on The Pseudo Show. Hey there, and welcome to The Pseudo Show, where business meets open source. I'm Brandon, and today is essentially a deep opinion piece. For those that are not aware, I'm very passionate about open source sustainability and funding. A few recent events prompted me to record this episode and get my thoughts out there. I'm not going to call out specific projects that are currently seeing departures of core maintainers, but I will be talking a little bit about what was discussed during the recent Log4j vulnerability. Overall, this is general commentary and not specific to any project. If you are interested in other episodes about this topic, check out episode 22 with Tidelift and episode 32, where Eric and I do an opinion piece similar to this. I've also written about this on my blog on open-tech.net. This episode of The Pseudo Show is brought to you by DigitalOcean. Head on over to do.co slash tux2022 to get started with a $100 credit. DigitalOcean has a comprehensive portfolio of compute, storage, database, and networking products that put your cloud infrastructure in capable hands so you and your teams can get back to doing what matters most, building world-changing apps that grow your business. Predictable pricing, robust product docs, and services that developers love. Get support at every stage of growth with simple, powerful comp- cloud computing. Get growing at DigitalOcean. As a listener of the Pseudo Show and a member of the DLN community, you can get started for free. In fact, it's better than free because DigitalOcean is giving you a $100 credit when you sign up at do.co slash tux2022. We want to thank DigitalOcean for sponsoring this episode of The Pseudo Show. Today's episode is brought to you by Bitwarden. Bitwarden is the easiest and safest way for individuals, teams, and business organizations to store, share, and sync sensitive data. Bitwarden is an open source password management tool whose feature set rivals any other tool on the market today. Not only is Bitwarden open source, it is regularly audited by security professionals. You can get started for free at bitwarden.com slash tux and plans start at just $10 per year. Thank you to Bitwarden for sponsoring the pseudo show and Tux Digital. On the pseudo show last year on episode 32, Eric and I had a conversation about open source sustainability and funding. Since then, there's been a lot of conversation about sustainability and funding of open source projects and whose responsibility it is to keep those projects going. Currently, some of the largest open source projects are being maintained by a handful of companies and foundations. They can only cover so much. So there's a lot of smaller projects out there that are just as critical as some of these large projects. They're being maintained by volunteers. This is the case for both business-focused and consumer-focused software. Now, I'm going to start off with the problem in the enterprise. Recently, there was a debate if the Log4j maintainers, if they would have been paid, that the vulnerabilities we heard about earlier this year and late last year would have been caught long ago and fixed by the developers somehow. If only they were paid. To me, I'm not sure if that would have helped but it did show a huge problem in the open source ecosystem. The software that runs critical applications are being maintained by unpaid volunteers. We are taking open source project maintainers and developers for granted. And our view on open source, that it means free as in free pizza, needs to make a radical change. Though paying the developers is no guarantee another major vulnerability will not occur, What it does guarantee is that at least someone has incentive to work on the code and make sure it is secure to the best of their ability and fix problems that come up. 
large corporations are just as guilty as individuals to having the point of view that open source software should be free as in free pizza. But in some cases, it is worse. Many technology leaders have no idea they are using open source libraries and tools to make up their critical enterprise applications until a vulnerability makes front page news and they come to find out their applications need to get patched and patched quickly. To illustrate this in an IDC study done in March of 2021, 56% of US technology leaders said that internally written applications do not use any open source code. This tells me that technology leaders do not understand what is going into their applications. I highly doubt there is no use of open source libraries or frameworks in 56% of internal enterprise applications being developed today, just given the prevalence of open source libraries being used everywhere. Large organizations need to stop this and take responsibility for the open source libraries and tools that they use in their applications. They need to create a software bill of materials of all their applications and understand if the open source communities behind libraries that they are using are active and they're getting regular commits. This right away will help them understand their open source software supply chain and the health of their applications and know where they need to make adjustments as well take a take a regular check on the communities behind these projects to ensure that they continue to get regular updates and, and activity. An enterprise application is critical to their business. The libraries are critical to the success of that application. So all of the libraries that make up an application are extremely important. From my point of view, Corporations need to find a way to contribute back, either through development work or paying the maintainer. We've talked about this on the show before with two of the founders of Tidelift on episode 22. There'll be a link to that episode in the show notes. Companies should be reaching out to Tidelift or similar uh, companies with similar models and working with them to ensure that the software developers stay engaged on the projects that they use. And on top of that, it gives a company a business entity to do business with versus trying to try to figure out a way to work with a developer to try to pay them. I've heard of companies reaching out to, to open source developers, like their support organization at a large software firm, demanding they fix a vulnerability or, or create a new feature without understanding they have no business relationship with that developer. Tidelift bridges that gap. If you are working for a company and you know they are using several different open source libraries in your enterprise applications, work with your leadership to build a software bill, bill of materials and get a handle on your open source software supply chain and check on the health of the communities of those libraries and frameworks before you become front page news. Now, I'm gonna turn my attention to the individual open source consumers and users. I love open source and the free software movement for making software obtainable, not just some of the best software that's ever been developed is free and open source software. And most of this software is free as in free pizza. This is great for everyone. We're paying for a software license or a subscription to a cloud service. It's just out of reach. GIMP, Inkscape, and LibreOffice are great examples of quality open source software. Everyone can get access to these programs free of charge, which helps bridge the digital divide. Some of these projects are backed by large foundations that are funded by some of the largest corporations in the world. As a result, many people think they may not need the money or they simply do not want to donate to a foundation because it is backed by a larger organization. Quite frankly, some of these foundations actually do need our help. 
also, there are tons of smaller projects that probably need our help more as a community. When I was younger, the open source community helped me become the technologist I am today. If it wasn't for open source and free software communities, I would have had no choice but to scrounge up enough money to buy Visual Studio or Borland and other, and other tools so I could learn. And as a high school student and a college student, that is out of reach. I am grateful for, for that. And that is something I never want to change. Now, what I'm about to say isn't meant for everyone. I'm not saying everyone needs to donate to a project. If you don't have the money to donate, please don't think I'm asking you to do this. Like if you're in the position I was 20 years ago, disregard this. But if you're interested, please, please keep listening. This is directed at the people that can do it. Within the last year, I've watched a few projects lose developers, either partially or completely, because they no longer are pulling in enough donations or other funding so they can focus on the project full time. Most of the projects I've seen this happen to are not projects I personally use. I have no skin in the game with the projects that I am seeing this happen to. It's an overall trend that's going in the wrong direction. My entire workflow is based around the use of open source software. I get a lot of value out of every piece of software I use. C-File is a per my personal preference for open source and self-hosted Dropbox alternative. It has saved me thousands over the last several years that I've had it implemented and in use. Joplin is my preferred alternative to Evernote. Love it, and it has become one of the best pieces of software for note taking in my from my point of view. EddieSync is what I use for syncing tasks and calendars between my devices. If any of those projects went away, it would have a huge impact on me. And I don't want to see any of these projects go away. And frankly, I don't want to see the projects that we've come to rely on go away either. I mean, even if they're not projects that I personally rely on. Now, for whatever reason, even the most hardcore open source enthusiast is willing to spend money on a proprietary piece of software or service. But those same people that are willing to pay for a proprietary software or service have an allergic reaction to paying or donating to an open source project. I'm advocating for us as an open source community to reset our thinking at both the corporate and individual level. At the corporate level, I want to see a change in thinking on how they build their software bill materials and how companies approach open source software if they don't use a vendor provided open source software. At the individual level, if you're paying for proprietary uh, software or service, or have paid for one in the past, if you've replaced it with an open source alternative, find a way to donate money to that project. I've been thinking about this for a while. I've been thinking about what I've been doing with my personal income. I haven't officially took the Giving What We Can pledge which is an initiative to donate 10% or more of your income to high impact charities. I've been essentially doing this for years, donating to Doctors Without Borders and other organizations that I think do really, really good work. And I've been thinking, can we do something similar, but in the open source realm? If I could wave a magic wand today and created a giving what we can pledge in the context of open source, what would it look like? At the individual level, uh, to me, it's easy. It's donate what you would pay for a similar service. If you are willing to spend $8 a month on Evernote, donate that money to Joplin or whatever project you are using if they accept donations. Now, I do this personally already. When I moved off Evernote, I just reallocated what I was paying to Evernote to Joplin. I do this with other projects as well. If you get value from an open source project, I'm calling on every individual to think about how they can contribute to an open source project. 
going back to the enterprise front, if you happen to be a technology decision maker or influencer at your company, figure out a way to reach out to the maintainers of the libraries and frameworks you use that don't have clear corporate backing from an organization like Red Hat, AWS, or Microsoft. In that same IDC study I mentioned earlier, 71% of technology decision makers surveyed have no plans to participate in open source projects of any kind. Be part of the 29% that plan to participate in some way. If you can't contribute due to corporate policy, to open source contributions, figure out a way to work with an open source project monetarily. Either donate through Open Collective, which is another way to, to be able to get to an open source project, assuming they're on Open Collective, or reach out to Tidelift. At the very least, as I said earlier, get an understanding of your software bill of materials and understand your open source supply chain. As an individual open source consumer and user, and assuming you can afford to do it, join me and take the giving what you can pledge, the open source version of it, and donate money to a project. Try and donate what you would pay for its proprietary counterpart, or if they have a paid product like Joplin Cloud or a sponsor Bitwarden, which is another example of awesome, high quality open source software that I personally think is better than its proprietary counterparts. I'm gonna personally double down on my commitment to this. This is outside of the giving what we can pledge. I'm pledging at least 10% of my earnings from the pseudo show will be going directly to software used to create this show where I hope it'll have the largest impact. Right now, the earnings from the show is not a lot, but it is something that will grow as the show's revenue grows. And 10% is just the floor. I hope that everyone that listens to the pseudo show that is able will join me in taking the giving what we can pledge to open source projects. My hope is to see more open source maintainers be able to work on their passion projects or be able to create new businesses like Joplin did and compete with big tech. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to continue this conversation, head on over to pseudo.show slash discuss. If you'd like more of the pseudo show, you can find it over on pseudo.show and on social media at pseudo show podcasts. Consider supporting the show on Patreon at pseudo.show slash Patreon. And you can catch more awesome content over at our network partners, tuxdigital.com. You can follow me on most social media at dbrandonjohnson or my website at open-tech.net and new content at pseudo.show slash YouTube. Thank you for listening to The Pseudo Show, where business meets open source. Until next time.